I had a patient uh, recently ask me about a product called Restore. Um, I guess the, uh, the email is not so good. I'll just um, ditch that one and, and give you where that came from. It was a, a series of videos by Joe Mercola. He's interviewing a doc named Dr. Zach Bush. Dr. Bush has a product called Restore. It's based on what they call the hydration angle. He says you basically can just measure your, um, your skin electrical impedance and uh, find out about whether or not you're aging properly. In other words, this is actually a gauge into the mitochondrial function. And he goes on and talks about that in several videos. I have a little bit of, um, I'm not entirely there yet. Uh, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. But first, an introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E um, <clears throat> I'm a physician, started off in emergency medicine. Working in the ER helps, uh, helps you develop a taste for prevention. And I did, went on to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Hopkins to get some training in prevention and have done that for about three decades since then. Um, <clears throat> and I learned then, and uh, it's still true, lifestyle is medicine. Uh, we talk about lifestyle in many videos. Uh, sometimes your body needs help even with the best lifestyle. Um, some of that's based on genetics and some other things and just the fact of, uh, of aging. <clears throat> now, is this one of those things that your body needs help with? Restore by Dr. Zach Bush. Um, he gets it from dirt and um, actually I've got nothing against eating dirt. He, that's one of his things, you know, you eat dirt and you get better. Um, <clears throat> that may sound weird, but that's a topic for a different time. Um, the, the concerns that I have are actually uh, different concerns. Number one, the test, the hydration angle. Um, what, uh, how about uh, hydration angle? It, it, basically, again, he said it's like a, an EKG uh, uh, measurement of the skin imp impedance. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me, let me just talk about the first, uh, what I think are strong points in terms of the science. Um, energy production, he talks about ATP, uh, water, oxygen, and all of this occurring in the mitochondria. Yes, of course, that's what makes us human beings. Um, the difference between human beings and, and fungi, fungus, mold that makes alcohol, uh, one of the many differences is uh, the fact that we have a mitochondria. That mitochondria uses oxygen to get over 30 units of ATP out of a glucose, whereas the fungus can only get, what, seven or eight? Um, again, oxygen is key to our uh, ability to get energy, and he got his, the science is pretty clear in that area. Here's another area where a lot of people are not aware of the science, and that has to do with leaky gut and tight junctions. Um, I've got uh, some separate slides on that. The, the science around that has actually been developed by a fellow who's, who started at um, University of Maryland in a tiny little uh, office behind the library and is now running a huge um, Zonulin uh, research program at Harvard. <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Bush's focus on cellular inflammation and aging, I think plenty of good focus behind that and scientific evidence behind that as well. So we've got three areas where he's got a good story uh, and there's plenty of evidence. The whole energy and oxygen and water story. The leaky gut story, believe it or not, is well researched at this point. And the focus on cellular infl inflammation and aging are all uh, well well researched, and maybe these other areas are researched too. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna talk about the areas that I think where we have holes in the story on uh, eating earth out of you know restore to uh, to stop aging. I'll talk about those holes in a few minutes. 
And again, I would appreciate nothing more than to find out that those holes have actually been filled, the science is correct, and I can stay young by just eating some of this uh, processed dirt. Um, <clears throat> but, but first, let's talk a little bit more about the zonulin um, leaky gut um, inflammation story. <clears throat> Zonulin is actually the precursor of haptoglobin 2-2. Haptoglobin 2-2 is a variation of haptoglobin. Uh, it's very common. The allele uh, frequency is 50%, meaning 50% uh, um, of the alleles you find in the human population is about that much is haptoglobin 2. Um, all of us have two alleles, so... Um, it's one quarter uh, regular haptoglobin, one quarter haptoglobin 2,2, two, and then 50% haptoglobin regular and haptoglobin um, 2. Now the problem here, and they've, de they've delineated it now on the chromosome. It's on chromosome 16. Um, <clears throat> and it's associated with a lot of uh, in inflammation in a lot of different cellular processes and associated with tight junctions. So those parts of the story are pretty clear. <clears throat> um, vitamin E appears to be a, a factor here and um, diabetes appears to be a factor. But let's put that aside for a few minutes and let's go back to the restore. Uh, there's a separate story regarding uh, haptoglobin for, uh, for diabetics. <clears throat> Why does this happen? What's the difference between what makes zonulin and what makes regular haptoglobin? Regular haptoglobin is a um, HAP11, is a, what we call a dimer. There's two um, e exact images of each other that form a dimer, a uh, two-part molecule. That is used to clean up oxidized and worn out hemoglobin. Uh, when you have HEP1-2, you start to get these um, more complicated molecules and you get what we call actually even florets when you, um, when you get HEP2-2. It's no longer the simple thin dimer that can get through capillaries and uh, into very narrow spaces to clean out oxidized iron and hemoglobin. Uh, that has to do with the inflammatory process and uh, inflammation specifically of vessels that you see in diabetics. It also has to do with um, tight junctions of the gut. Um, zonulin, which is the precursor for uh, HAP2-2, reacts with uh, tight junctions in the gut as well as tight junctions in other body tissues and um, opens those tight junctions, then you can get an increase of um, foreign body material. Now, <clears throat> so I've talked about a lot of different places where Zach Bush's story certainly appears to hold true, even places that most docs would not know, um, like the, the leaky gut, zonulin, um, um, <clears throat> gluten story. I, I'm just now mentioning gluten. Pardon my uh, senior moment on that. Gluten is gliadins. Glutens and gliadins actually trip off the zonulin uh, reaction with the tight junctions. So, yes, uh, gluten's involved in this story too. But again, let's go back and talk about what are the weak points in his science, uh, at least weak points that I'm seeing, and again, weak points that I'd love to be educated on. Uh, the connection between dermal impedance and cell membrane function. What am I talking about here? Well, he says that there's a test called the hydration angle test. He says it's basically uh, very similar to an EKG electrode measuring the impedance, the electrical impedance of your skin. He says that test can tell you about the um, the ability of your cell membranes to uh, properly hydrate your cell. 
Again, I'm not seeing a lot of science in that area. In addition, the connection between that dermal impedance and micro mitochondrial function. So not only is he saying that this electrical impedance tells you about your, um, your cell function and ability to hydrate the cell, it also tells you about the ability of that cell to uh, have proper mitochondrial function. Again, a major disconnect, at least from what I'm seeing in the literature so far. Now, as you go on into the story, and I've referred a couple of times to this uh, product made, made from dirt, uh, the Restore and the other good health, gut health products that uh, Dr. Bush is selling. The connection between gut tight junctions and distal cell mitochondria. So, again, I, as I said, I get it about the, um, the, um, the gut health. I get it about the tight junctions. I actually even get um, inflammation associated uh, in places like the thyroid and other um, body tissues associated with gut health and associated with uh, leaky gut and... Um, um, Zonulin. He doesn't mention zonulin, by the way. He doesn't go into any of that. Um, <clears throat> what I don't get are these, uh, these components that I mentioned. So, <clears throat> what are some other options? Well, number one, you can get a haptoglobin 2, two test. Uh, we've done that for many of our patients. Um, it's about a $300 test. It's, it's valid. It's a test of genetics. And a lot of people um, don't have that kind of money to get a test. If you don't, one thing very simple and inexpensive is to do a trial of a gluten-free diet. Uh, for those of you that are on a low-carb diet, and as we age, we start getting into carbohydrate metabolism problems, um, that's becoming a much more popular diet. Glutens, gliadins are also, uh, they are a huge component of uh, wheat. So those of us that are on a low-carb diet uh, are often on a low-gluten diet, uh, whether we know it or not. Another thing that's less expensive than getting uh, uh, test, uh, the genetic tests and maybe more reliable than the um, well, maybe not more reliable. It's less expensive, I think, than getting a lot of testing. It's to just do the trial of the Restore. I saw several different prices. It didn't look like too much. I'm still not motivated enough to, uh, to try this. I still have too much skepticism, personally. Um, <clears throat> now, if you're diabetic, uh, there are a couple of other suggestions I would have that are crystal clear. Number one, make sure that you control your hemoglobin A1C. Uh, to less than six, really you want to get it less than five and a half and even less than five if you can. And take vitamin E, uh, 400. Now why don't I say that? Actually, if you look at this trial, this was a trial looking at diabetics that have haptoglobin 2, 2. Um, <clears throat> and it's a life table analysis. So again, haptoglobin or zonulin or leaky gut is a major risk factor for diabetics. And it gets back to the point I was talking about earlier. Inflammatory um, ve vessel damage. Uh, when all of us wear out the hemoglobin, as we do, uh, the hemoglobin, which is in red cells, the red cells break um, and you get oxidized iron. Hemoglobin carries iron for that oxygen for the big improvement in metabolism that we talked about earlier. Um, <clears throat> you can't clear it out if you've got uh, HAP2-2, but vitamin E does appear to help. And more than anything, keeping that uh, blood uh, sugar on average low um, let me just explain this. Basically, these are life, life tables for diabetics. This is, these are diabetics that were taking vitamin E and had a good lifestyle. These were diabetics uh, that were taking placebo. So you get a significant improvement 
in morbidity and mortality. That's uh, disease and death uh, associated with just some very simple, inexpensive items. Again, I'd love to find out that I'm wrong and that um, this product can actually uh, keep me young. I've just developed re um, insulin resistance over the past year or so, so I'd clearly be eager to try it. Thank you for your attention.